Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Chris Beto from Mapillary. And I'm Gray Kahneman from CART. Uh, today we're going to talk to you about fixing OpenStreetMap with government imagery uh, and some other related topics. Okay, first, just a little introduction on CART and what we do. Um, if any of you have attended a, a talk regarding corporate editing teams, we're one of those scary corporate editing teams, but I promise we have really good intentions and we make awesome data. Um, so we deal mostly with road data, um, but we have dealt with all different types of data, building data, uh, et cetera. And for most of our purposes, we rely heavily on street level imagery. Um, around the world, we have created over 500,000 change sets, which is cool. I just took this screenshot from our website again um, in the last 24 hours, and we just hit 500,000. So that was a better number than 499. Anyway, um, and that's uh, over 36 million changes to the map. And Mapillary, uh, how many people have used Mapillary, are familiar with it, have the app contributed? So quite a few. So not everyone needs an introduction to Mapillary, but just to review. Uh, we call ourselves the street level imagery platform that scales and automates mapping. That's definitely very important if you're editing OpenStreetMap on a large scale and need data collection. Uh, so collaboration with cameras and computer vision uh, is the service that we bring. Uh, we have the fastest growing data set of street level imagery in the world. We're an independent platform. Uh, we take imagery from many collaborative sources. So the one we're talking about today is primarily government, uh, although CARD is also a source and our community and many others. And mainly what we're focusing on here is how Mapillary makes government uh, roadway imagery available on OSM. So government may be capturing it, and Mapillary is kind of the bridge that allows you to view that in your OSM editors. Uh, okay, so the challenge of staying up to date. Um, as I mentioned, we do work around the world. Um, we've been to a multitude of different countries and spread ourselves as thin as possible. Um, we're still a pretty small company, so staying up to date on this groundwork that we do, on the data that we add, is really difficult. Um, how do we keep it updated and how, how often do we need new data? Um, obviously, the answer is case by case. In certain countries, development is a lot slower. Um, in certain big cities, development is happening really, really rapidly. Um, so that, that need for a data refresh could come a lot sooner in certain places. But it's not always feasible for us to revisit these places. In fact, I'm fairly certain there's almost nowhere we've been that we've done a large scale data addition to that we've already revisited. Um, and we're going on to our sixth year of existence. Um, so there's that and waiting on new satellite imagery. If any of you are heavy OpenStreetMap editors and have been around for a while, you know that new imagery isn't added very frequently. And if you're, any, <laughs> if you're at all like me, you get really excited when you see that there's new imagery. You're like, oh my gosh, I didn't see that before. New imagery, great, I can add a lot of new data. Um, but obviously, we can't just wait around for that to happen. Um, so just to give you a little perspective on what it looks like for us to perform a ground survey, um, what we refer to as a trip is typically two people or more, depending on what the data need is, the size of the area. Um, but a trip is two people, six to seven days, and we can cover anywhere from one to 200, sometimes upward from there, um, miles a day. Um, so if that puts into perspective, us being only about 150 people and then an actual travel team of about 20 people, we obviously can't cover very much ground. So Mapillary comes in as a, a solution to this type of problem. And I just want to quickly give you an overview of the architecture that we go through. Um, at the bottom center, you see our contributor network. So that's anyone capturing images. Uh, so once they've captured them, they're geolocated, we're going to 3D reconstruct the scene from those images uh, using structure from motion, which uh, forms a point cloud from pixels rather than something like LiDAR. We look for things like traffic signs, different objects in those images. We create map features from that. 
the data gets published out, uh, as well as the imagery to editors. So you'll see traffic signs from Mapillary also in the OpenStreetMap editors. And in turn, this, we hope, gets our contributor network uh, energized to keep contributing and get more data fresher and faster. Okay, so um, some of our data sources, um, obviously the ground survey that I've been talking about is our main source of data, um, but we do have multiple different projects within the company. So we use whatever is available. Um, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of you are probably familiar with the rate of new imagery being added to OpenStreetMap. Probably if you use street level imagery, you're aware of the consistency of data being added to open source street level imagery platforms like Bing, street side imagery, um, and open street cam. Uh, and a lot of the areas that we work in, we're incredibly limited, but so much of the data comes from that type of imagery. Um, so just to talk a little bit about what kind of data and I'll have some examples in a bit, comes from satellite versus street level imagery. Um, if any of you have done this kind of work and use street level and satellite imagery, you're probably familiar with the limitations of satellite imagery. A lot of the time it can be great, but this free imagery is going to be pretty low resolution, and that already limits what you can add, what you can see, what you can actually verify and validate. Um, so with satellite imagery, you can add a multitude of, of road data like lanes, turn lanes, um, some, some attributes like surface type with that sort of stuff, but you're missing a ton of road data. If you had a road network that was drawn in entirely on satellite imagery, it would be chaos because you would be missing things like max speeds, turn restrictions, um, you possibly couldn't classify certain roads because you don't know what it looks like on the ground, how traffic flows through it, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then other details th that you're missing from satellite imagery, all the road signage, um, addresses. If you're interested in amenities, you can get a lot of information just looking at a storefront from the street level. Um, and then doing a ground survey and actually collecting satellite imagery have a huge cost deficit. So um, I don't know if any of you have ever tried to inquire about getting imagery, satellite imagery, or a flyover, but it's incredibly, incredibly expensive. Um, and you also will find that it's a lot more difficult to target a certain area. And then there's complications like clouds, weather, etc. So I like to draw a parallel between the maintenance of roads as well as the maintenance of maps. Uh, and the thing with roads is when you're a Department of Transportation, like, uh, for example, VTrans in Vermont that contributes to Mapillary, you constantly have new projects, things are being constructed, the roads are decaying. Uh, as soon as you pave a new road, it's immediately starting to fall apart again, and it's the clock is ticking till you have to refinish it one more time. And... The condition of all this, uh, whether it's the changes or just the, the decay or damages, is all monitored with imagery that's surveyed from uh, cameras on vehicles. So this is something the government has already been doing independently for many years. Uh, and I just think this is a perfect parallel for how we maintain the map as well. As soon as you make an edit, it's already decaying. It's a matter of time before something's going to change and evolve. So the interesting thing about government is they have the ability to capture at scale. Um, they already capture vast amounts of imagery. Some of them don't even know uh, that it can serve other purposes than something very specific they do. So here's a tweet from uh, 2017 where VTrans, uh, Stephen at VTrans shared that they had all this imagery on the Vermont highways, but he wasn't really sure what to do with it. And he shared that he had these hard drives full of it in a drawer, literally sitting in a drawer. And this was something we then turned around and were able to put on Mapillary. And this was the beginning of a big pattern of getting a lot of uh, departments of transportation to migrate that imagery online. And many of them are doing this annually. They're capturing all the roadways comprehensively. They have fleets of vehicles, so the reach is just massive. Uh, even in small places like Vermont, it covers a lot more than any single person or community member can do comprehensively. Uh, and it also extends beyond highways to places like city streets, uh, city parks, county parks, railways, uh, water districts, and many more uses where 
imagery can help with monitoring the change and uh, and uh, decay of data as well as the actual physical infrastructure. So here's just a few examples: uh, Detroit, uh, DPW, Department of Public Works in Washington D.C., uh, the Florida Department of Transportation. Uh, there's many others on this list that are using imagery for multiple purposes, whether it's physical or digital. Uh, and the city, I really want to point out, has a lot more density of data you can derive from that imagery. So uh, you'll see here in Detroit, the 360 imagery is revealing a lot of uh, points of interest, amenities, uh, things like trash bins, outdoor seating areas, all this that you don't really see on highway imagery, but that's really valuable for the map. So collecting this for their own purposes has a side effect that it's super useful for OSM. Uh, and even in Detroit, they're actually contributing back to OSM as a way of managing city data. Um, so a little bit about CARTS editing. Like I said, we rely heavily on this ground survey. Um, there's the number that I couldn't think of earlier. We've been to 72 countries now and counting. Um, things we're looking for in our ground survey, like missing streets, turn restrictions, um, any traffic data or signage, um, all the way down to crosswalks, traffic calming features, anything that would affect road data in any way. Amenities and addresses, um, that's, you know, things like uh, hospitals, schools, government buildings, all the way down to houses and addresses. Um, and editing road classification with our street level data as well. Good. Um, and so here's an idea of highway mapping. And specifically in the context of a project, we, well, not completed, but worked on all the way through um, the end of 2018 last year. So our idea was to improve highway and motorway data as much as possible. Um, and so relating this back to the government data, we used a tremendous amount of strictly uh, government uploaded imagery to Mapillary. Um, these are all the highways in Vermont and Michigan, Detroit, that we specifically worked on. And we we're adding things that involved um, mostly destination type tagging. Um, so we added a, a huge amount of data, but a huge gap still exists, even on the highways where the data density is a lot lower. Um, so some of the data we were able to derive, like I said, is destination, destination ref, max speeds, max heights motorway junction refs, um, all this stuff that you can see on the signs up here. I know it's, it's kind of, it, it was interesting to me because at first, you know, even driving and then on looking at street level imagery, I would see signs like this and largely ignore them because I didn't think that, that there, there was that much information contained within them. But after going through this project, I realized just how much of information can be extracted from a single sign like this. Um, so it improves navigation too um, and to give you an example of that just a general example like with this sign if you hadn't had any of the data added from it uh, a navigation application would tell you something maybe like take the exit toward this street versus if you added all the destination information it could be something as specific as stay in the right lane and take exit 247 to i-20 east toward augusta um and so a quick breakdown just, I actually won't go through all this just because of time limitations, but here's it, every single one of those errors represents another tag that you can add in OpenStreetMap um, down to destination, destination ref, junction ref, lanes, and then all those, you know, those green signs, even in the distance, you could do destination ref two. It goes on and on. And just a quick overview of hardware. Uh, not a lot of time to look at these, but. Uh, you can see it ranges from iPhone to GoPro dash cams all the way up to a Trimble MX-7 camera. And so like a lot of these are very uh, accessible to a community or to very like small cities, but others of them are very expensive and they provide high quality imagery with great GPS, but require somebody with like the budget of a, even a state government or big city. So that's another advantage of having governments on board for contributing images. So overall, just to look at the future. Uh, it's important to ask questions like, how much imagery do we need? Uh, how widely do we need it? Do we need all highways? Do we need all cities? Answer is generally yes to all the above, as much as we can get to, to give a reference for the map. 
Uh, and we also need it refreshed often, as often as possible, really. Um, annual surveys are great. Uh, there's a lot of different initiatives out there to actually be updating imagery continuously, uh, day by day, week by week. And this really helps keep maps uh, relevant from the moment you open it. Uh, you don't want that data to be decaying. So overall, we like to portray this as being kind of a, an open data triangle where government's able to capture imagery at scale. Uh, Mapler is able to process and host that. And it serves it back for mapping initiatives, whether it's community or uh, other groups like CART. And then the usefulness of that imagery means we repeat that process. We get more imagery and more mapping. Um, so CART as a small organization has contributed a tremendous amount of data to OSM through Ground Survey. We're responsible for over 50% of the image tree on Mapillary. And there might be a couple of people from CART in the crowd that are mad at me for that number because it could even be higher, but it's a lot. Um, but we, like I mentioned earlier, cannot go back and revisit those places feasibly, um, which is why we try to work so closely with the communities of the places we go to encourage them to continue to improve the data. But even they can't do anything to improve it if they don't have the resources necessary. Um, so just imagine how much more could be achieved if street level imagery were collected by these government agencies um, and added to a database like Mapillary. We could continuously update data year to year, week to week, however much um, is requisite. Uh, so thanks for stopping by. Uh, we'll hope you'll come at 5 p.m. to the Birds of a Feather session for street level imagery in Mapillary in the Nexus room, raffling a camera so you can go ahead and sign up. and. Uh, We'll take questions now. We actually don't have time for questions. No questions. Uh, the next session is about to start. Uh, take those follow up questions to that bridge of the feather and make it happen there. Thanks. See you at five after the plenary. Thank you, everyone. Yeah.